Okay, now everyone talking about the stock market crash. How the stock market will crash? Nobody knows for sure the details, but recently I've been researching stock market crash topic and faced an indicator which is called Baltic Dry Index. This index could be very much one of the reasons to dry your pocket, wallet, brokerage account, whatever you choose. Let's break down how the stock market will crash soon. Hey there, my name is Ken. If you are new here, I talk about personal finance and investments on this channel. Make sure to trade the like button and invest in subscription to the channel. You're also welcome to support the channel. All the links are down in the description. So let's start with what is the Baltic Dry Index BDI. The Baltic Dry Index is a shipping and trade index created by the London-based Baltic Exchange. It measures changes in the cost of transporting various raw materials such as coal and steel. Members of the exchange directly contact shipping brokers to assess price levels for given shipping paths, a product to transport and time to delivery or speed. The Baltic Dry Index is a composite of three sub-indices that measure different sizes of dry bulk carriers or merchant ships. They are Cape Size, Panamax and Supermax. So the Baltic Dry Index is an index of average price paid for the transport of dry bulk materials across more than 20 routes. This index is often viewed as a leading indicator of economic activity because changes in the index reflect supply and demand for important materials used in manufacturing. The BDI can experience high levels of volatility because the supply of large carriers tends to be small with long lead times and high production costs. But how does it affect stock market now? How the stock market will crash? Okay, okay, here's hypothesis on this matter. First, let's review a real-world example. The index can fall when the goods shipped are raw, pre-production material, which is typically an area with minimal levels of speculation. The index can experience high levels of volatility if global demand increases or suddenly drops off because the supply of large carriers tends to be small with long lead times and high production costs. Stock prices increase when the global market is healthy and growing, and they tend to decrease when it's stalled or dropping. The index is reasonably consistent because it depends on black and white factors of supply and demand without much in the way of influences such as unemployment and inflation. The Baltic Dry Index predicted the 2008 recession in some measure when prices experienced a sharp drop. In one striking example of the insight that can come from the index, analysts could observe that between September 2019 and January 2020, the Baltic Dry Index fell by more than 70%, a strong indication of economic contraction. This occurred directly ahead of the outbreak of the current pandemic. So what is happening on these days? Well, besides the situation in Afghanistan, there is a continuing chaos in shipping. The closure of the terminal at the planet's third largest container port is the latest sign that the chaos in shipping could smoothly transition into 2022. It also threatens the growth of the global economy with chronic delivery delays and skyrocketing transport costs. As a result, demand may remain unsatisfied and prices may rise. The outbreak of the pandemic led to the partial closure of the Chinese port of Ningbo Zhoushan in Zhejiang province last week, which reduced its capacity by a fifth, of course with all the ensuing negative consequences. This is not the first such closure of a major port in China. In May, due to the outbreak of the pandemic, the Yantian terminal was closed for three weeks which led to very serious disruptions in global sea transport of goods. Constant rise in tariffs and regular congestion in major ports add to the problems that have plagued the supply chain over the past year and a half. Other problems are, of course, first of all, the crisis in the semiconductor sector and the rise in prices for raw materials. Importers and exporters are trying to cover the losses caused by the increase in tariffs for sea freight now, for example, transporting a standard 12-meter container from China to the west coast of the United States costs almost $15,800. This price, according to Fridos, is 10 times more than before the pandemic and 50% more than in July this year. The disruptions began in the second half of the last year after the collapse in demand for goods caused by the pandemic. Transport companies, of course, tried to solve the problems, but their attempts nullified the incident with the ship that blocked the Suez Canal in March 
and the closure of the Yantian terminal, as well as restrictions at the borders and a shortage of port workers. The partial closure of the Ningbo Zhushan port for an indefinite period is the latest issue that is likely to deepen the global logistics crisis even further. According to Vessel's value, about 350 container ships with a capacity of approximately 2.4 million 6 meter containers. This global congestion is exacerbating the idle capacity of the global cargo fleet, which reached 4.6% in August. The situation worsened further because in July, according to Clarkson's Plateau Securities, the idle rate was 3.5%. Lars Mikhail Jensen, head of the Maersk Sea Freight Leader, agrees that after the appearance of the Delta strain, the situation is not improving but only getting worse. According to him, the maritime transport networks are now under such stress that the slightest problem and failure can result in major troubles. The explosive rise in container tariffs coupled with delivery delays will have far-reaching consequences. Most of the supplies have been satisfactory so far, but large problems have arisen with the supply of bulky, inexpensive materials. Now is the defining moment for shipments to Europe for Christmas. The projected shortage of seasonal goods will increase inflation. The German carrier Hapag Lloyd believes that the current difficult situation will last until the first quarter of next year, but according to head Rolf Huben Jensen, this period may be delayed due to high demand. In Europe, supply chain disruptions have already caused industrial production to decline in the summer. Large manufacturers and retailers are forced to bolster their supply chains by stocking up on large quantities of materials and goods, frantically looking for replacement suppliers and even shutting down operations. All this is expensive. Not surprisingly, many small companies are now on the brink of survival. Well, I think this is the main threat to the economy in this period of time. Moreover, it is just beginning to make itself felt. What is happening now can be very roughly compared to a situation where a barrel of oil would rise in price from $20 to $200. Global Shippers Forum Secretary General James Hukem believes that the current situation is hitting the developing countries which supply western markets with raw materials and goods. Companies in these countries are practically being killed by the time lag between paying for transportation at very high prices and the ability to change contracts with customers which can reach 9 to 12 months. All of this chaos in shipping and logistics world can definitely affect the stock market and we might see the effect in the nearest weeks. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this. I'd love to discuss with you. Here are more other videos about personal finance and investments for you. Make sure to trade the like button, invest in subscription to the channel and hit the notification bell. See you in the next video.